Okay, if you remember back some time ago, we uh, did a thing on uh, Chinese transistors and um, whether to use them or not. And um, it's become very evident that, you know, look, they're not all frauds, but um, a lot are. And um, this was a couple that, actually I'm just pulling the other one out uh, in there at the moment. Uh, but um, uh, we did a bit of a review of the FT7, how to pull the board out, etc., etc., how to um, change the finals. But the, um, uh, the only issue was that... Um, uh, of course, we ended up with uh, a set of um, supposedly brand new finals, which were supplied with the radio. Um, I actually bought this radio from a chap um, who bought the transistors in himself. Um, and look, these things happen. Um, uh, he would have paid probably thirty or forty bucks each for these, and they're complete failures. So be a bit careful when you're buying out of China. Let me show you the best way to buy, and this is not going to happen very often. In 1991. 29th of the 3rd, 1991. Uh, this uh, is the manufacture date of 22SC 2395s, and uh, they are straight out of the Bale Yesu stock. So um, there's a really good chance that they're going to work. Uh, as you can see, they're clearly labelled, you know, the original Toshibas. Now, just, you know, people have been asking me, you know, do I just look for the Toshiba, Toshiba you know, it's a nice glossy looking Toshiba. Well, no. Um, it doesn't mean that, <laughs> when I say no, it means don't just look for that. Um, what you need to do is to um, verify from somebody that, you know, um, because I'm, I'm seeing this designator uh, coming out of China just with a little T on it. Um, and this is the originals, as you can see from the paperwork. So... You know, even though <laughs> it's funny, I would think if I was going to buy something, these would be the copies with the, the, the very plain T on them, and these here with the beautiful, you know, uh, Toshiba and sort of cursive writing uh, and so quaintly done and so much about Japan on there, although these have got Japan too. But yeah, so I mean, this just shows you that uh, these um, transistors here uh, are what um, Bale uh, used to get in. Um, in the day and um, back in the days of um, um, uh, Fred Bale etc and uh, <clears throat> excuse me but um, uh, although this is pretty late in the piece to be fair um, I think these would have been probably even Wangaratta days um, anyway we could check that out anyway so we're going to pop those um, into this little board here and hopefully have a bit more success than what we had on the uh, previous ones as you can see we we have to sort of pull off bits and pieces um, just as we're going through because they're um, going across from, um, oh, what are they doing? Uh, uh, base, they're switching on, so that would be, oh, I've got to think about this now. Um, collector, yeah, okay. It's all right, I'm just having a think. I've got a circuit in front of me at the moment. <laughs> Luckily, I pulled them off and... Uh, uh, I'll just double check my photo, but um, yeah, I'm pretty sure they were um, they were going sort of um, base collector. But um, anyway, we'll have a look at that. Anyway, um, it's been a long day today, <laughs> I can tell you. Uh, just um, be a bit careful once again when you're putting these boards back in. Uh, not to, um, uh, this little fella here can't be uh, grounded in any way. Um, to use the, you know, don't get tempted to to do anything but use a little um, insulated screw it just makes your life so much easier um, and uh, less likely to, to get a problem with um, grounding out the um, little fella all right well let's put some transistors in and um, see if these um, blasts from the past um, want to give us a little bit better result than the um, previous attempt from china might be long okay i'll just mention um when you're prizing these little fellas out um, be careful not to get too much heat I use a um, little weller this is enough um, this is the um, weller station up here um, which just has a little pencil iron it's all you need uh, a lot of people think when you're pulling out um, any of the MRF, MRF series um, and you know larger 2SC series that you've got to get a big plumber's iron in there you don't um, but patience is definitely what you want to do um, and what you do is you pick your hardest leg first um, so go in and sort of um, get in there and, you know, uh, desolder, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And then you kind of reverse that theory uh, just for desoldering. Um, you then take your easiest leg uh, when you start to prise them out because your last leg, which will generally be the one that's, you know, probably tucked away somewhere, um, you can just heat and lever the whole thing out because it'll be the last thing um, uh, that's holding it in. So it's a bit of a reverse strategy, but... Um, 
um, but you really don't want to get too much heat. You can damage uh, quite a bit around here. And the other thing too is um, we always go in and, and clean up all these areas here, all your fluxes left uh, before putting your new ones in. And um, then basically your uh, little fellas over here will go in and um, will serve you better. And um, look, it's a pretty hard job to get wrong, to be honest. It's it is you know it's not exactly intricate electronics, but um, but where you can go wrong is you know forgetting that okay this goes to ground, this goes over here, etc. And, and making sure. So you know I, I regularly sort of say look, take photos. Um, don't expect yourself to be a genius. Um, I certainly don't. And um, you know um, you can make all the mistakes in the world um, as long as you don't put power on them <laughs> you know sort of as long as you get your photo and have a look at it and say well yep that resembles what I pulled to bits um, um, don't forget too when you're putting um, all this back together you know diodes just flip back over and most of all don't forget because uh, you won't see this process but um, don't forget um, uh, you want some heat, heat sink um, goo on there some compound um, just to make sure that you know you're getting good transfer of heat through to the um, the heat sink in there but overall this is a job that anybody could really do it's um, it's not a difficult job um, well I suppose if, if it ends up working I suppose you know if I if I come back to you and say well that didn't fix it um, we'll, we'll call it a more intricate job then all right I'll, we'll start uh, reassembling this but I just thought it was worth you know talking about the cleanup of this area here the getting out of the transistors very carefully um, you know just take your time um, you know, you, you can solder wick it out, but boy, it's, you know, sometimes it's a little bit um, painful uh, if you've got a decent desoldering gun. Actually, look, just quickly on that, I bought one the other day, um, uh, cheapest chips. Look, even though I've got my nice Weller, um, I wanted a backup that was, you know, 100 bucks. Um, and uh, these ZD-985s, um, you can get all the spares from... Um, Rhino, um, I've got a whole bag of spares I bought separate to it, but this is just a backup. I haven't used it yet, but you know this is probably quite neat for high volume, um, you know, uh, desoldering. So look, there are, you know, you don't have to buy four thousand dollar soldering irons, um, um, and I certainly didn't pay that for it. I got a bit lucky with my mate Brendan, three <laughs> MH, um, uh, but. Um, nice and, and yeah and and you know use your contacts around the place too when you're trying to you know get yourself um, set up because you know there's a lot of people want to try and help you for sure um, it, it, it doesn't have to be all retail there's a lot of stuff sitting around in cupboards and bits and pieces all right well we'll get back to putting this back together sorry I just keep thinking that maybe things are worth saying um, look um, don't try to put them in like this uh, though the legs will be sorry the legs will be way way too long um, you basically want to uh, chuck it in you know sort of in front of it and say to yourself right where do I want to you know, clip those leads to so we'll give you an example of that right so this is sort of a look at the preparation this is the one that we've just done um, obviously the simplest way to um, to just check what sizes are going to fit nicely have a look at your old device and just check the, the sizes there and as long as they felt like they had plenty of meat on them you know you could just cut it to suit there um, use a fairly um, sharp set of cutters on the uh, legs definitely be careful not to try if you're cutting them try not to ever pull this way um, you don't want to sort of wrench um, or displace any of that there um, look I've never damaged one to be honest but you're always sort of careful but yeah just um, fine set of cutters we just use these little fellas over here and um, and they'll just go snip 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 no problems and uh, Bob's your uncle so basically once you've got your um, transistors in um, once again you know, put a, um, a diagonal screw here and diagonal sorry one screw there and one diagonally right over here put your transistors into place uh, put the two screws actually in so this is a bit like welding now you can now just tack them in uh, with a bit of solder and you'll have them solidly in place look you know you could do the whole solder job on them from here probably you know quite okay um, I tend to sort of just drop the board out again and and um, you know once I've got them tacked just so I can see every last angle it's not so much that I can't get into it it's what I might do that I can't see uh, while it's down in this enclosure when I've got the board out I can actually see if you know if I've inadvertently caused a short or something silly I'm gonna see it a lot closer so but yeah, just that's um, that's a great way to make sure that you you get these um, transistors to line up. Nothing worse for that to be five degrees over, and suddenly you go to put your screws in. And you think, well, hang on, I've just put all my coupling capacitors, everything on there, the resistors are back on, and, but I can't screw these down. And you think, oh, not good, not so good. So um, anyway, um, just a hint to uh, to make sure you get them lined up, okay? 
All right, so we've had this board in and then, uh, sorry, out and just put it back in again. Um, and uh, basically also keep an eye on um, when you're soldering your tabs here, um, you'll actually see the solder take to the tab. All of a sudden, it'll just kind of move forward. It'll be sort of trying to, you know, uh, etch yourself on, then all of a sudden it goes forward. And you don't need a lot. I don't feel like you've got to flood the areas with solder. It's um, once they're in, they're in. Anyway, so, um, but that's, you know, how they look once they're in there. Um, and this is a perfect alignment because of the fact that we pull the board in and out and, you know, and place it correctly first. Uh, so it just can't go wrong. I shouldn't say can't go wrong, but shouldn't go wrong. Now, of course, um, there's no better feeling than when you hook up a radio. And believe me, often you do hook them back up. Um, you certainly don't put the screws all back in, um, but you hook them up and you find out, ah, damn, still doesn't work. But in this case, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, what are we getting out of this fella? One, two, three, oh, look. Oh, the whistle was terrible. Oh, look, audio, audio. Oh, look. Uh, let's call it, be generous, call it 20 watts. <laughs> so, anyway, so we have... This time, <laughs> used absolutely genuine transistors. Um, care of my good mate Russell Wood. Thank God he had these bits uh, from 1991. And uh, uh, it unfortunately, you know, I hate putting down the Chinese at all. You know, it's not that's not the purpose of the video. But unfortunately, you know, it's proven beyond a doubt that the ones that uh, the chap got down from China were were faulty. And uh, look, you know, as you can see from this video, look, it's a really easy repair. It's it's not something that um, you know it, it's would be considered highly technical. And um, there's a couple little checks, you know, just to make sure that you've you've got everything right in there. Um, we probably should have went through the bias check actually, but um, uh, to be honest, I didn't have to do a thing, so um, I suppose that's why I didn't. But um, and often that'll be the case. So you should still check it uh, if you get any signs of. Um, Audio, you know, people tell you the audio sounds a bit sort of clippy or something a bit strange. You know, go back and check the bias, of course. But uh, but that's one FT7 uh, going again, and um, and you know, it's nice to know this one's got genuine parts. Um, uh, this one, uh, I've got another set to um, to do on another one, uh, which actually won't. This one's one we'll be keeping. But uh, and as you can see, there's a reason why. It's just um, it's mint. Here's the original box for it. Everything there. Um, so, you know, this was well worth um, restoring because it's such a great example of the uh, of the era. Um, this one hardly got out of its box when it was uh, when it was new. I know the owner personally. So uh, anyway, all right. So that's um, the FT7 part two, really, uh, because as you remember, part one was a failure. Uh, I can't remember how we ended that video. Whether you guys got to hear that um, that the transistors were dead. <laughs> or not um, I um, I might have um, I might have left you in limbo so you know I suppose that's the um, the end of the story now at least you can see that um, with a bit of work one two three four five one two one two one two pretty happy with the way this thing's going so um, hopefully with some uh, original transistors it's got another 20 30 years in it so uh, we'll see how that goes 73s from VK 3 cm Jack Daniels whiskey 229 10 Gambalanga Northeast Victoria, please subscribe and get on board with us. Love all your comments and bits, so uh, always appreciated. Cheers.